It's very easy to find the limit of any function once you know the specific method that you should always use. Hey everyone, my name is Miguel, also known as the Vegan Math Guy, and you are at Mount Calculus at Sokotoa Park. So today we're going to cover a lot of limits, and especially we're going to talk about direct substitution, then we're going to talk about methods like factoring, taking the conjugate, trying to simplify limits that have a fraction within a fraction. Limits are very important in the study of calculus, and it's good to know them now before you even start the class. So feel free to download the file by clicking on the link in the description below and follow along with me. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I post more math content for you to enjoy. You ready to explore limits? Let's get started. All right, here we are. And don't forget that I put the link to this file that you can download on your Google Drive, print it out and follow along with me. Okay, so let's talk about the very first thing that we should always try whenever we have limits, and that is gonna be direct substitution. So you always wanna plug in the value that the limit is approaching because there's a possibility that the limit already exists. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in three into this limit and that's gonna give me three plus two over three. What do you know? Five over three. So the limit already exists. We didn't have to do any other method but just use direct substitution. And you're going to see in the other problems, we're always going to use direct substitution. I think it's always important and I think it's always good to just plug it in so that you get something that we like to call an indeterminate form. And then we can go ahead and figure out and play along with the limits and see what we can actually do. All right. So let's go to this particular limit here. Looks pretty innocent, I would say. Let's go ahead and plug in three. Or in this case, I'm sorry, you're going to go ahead and plug in the value that it's approaching and that's two. And let's see what we get. So we get two squared plus two times two minus eight over two minus two. You can already tell that on the bottom, you're gonna have zero. So that's kind of gonna be a problem. Then on the top, we have four plus four minus eight. And that simplifies to zero over zero. And that's what we like to call an indeterminate form. A lot of the times people are gonna say, okay, the limit doesn't exist. That's not necessarily true. If we were to graph this function, that means that there's probably a hole. Something is happening at two. And we're gonna go ahead and figure that out. We're still gonna to try to find the limits. So this is where we go ahead and use other methods. And in this case, you know, the, uh, the numerator looks like a, a nice quadratic. So I'm gonna go ahead and just factor. That's usually the very first method that you learn in calculus whenever we are taking limits. And so what you wanna do is you wanna to factor the top. Looks like that can turn into x plus 4 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. And what do you know? The x minus 2s cancel out. And if you recall this from pre-calculus, perhaps algebra 2, you're going to notice that this is technically a hole in the function. So now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my new limit. And that's limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 4. Notice that I keep continue to write these limits. Some teachers are really picky about it and they're going to want you to continue writing the limit because technically that's what you're solving and you haven't plugged in two yet. So you want to be very, very uh, aware of this and make sure that you write the limit. If you don't, I don't think it's that um, big of a deal, but some teachers can really take points off. So just be careful with that. Okay, so now I have the limit as x approaches two of x plus four and I use direct substitution again. I go ahead and plug in two and what do I get? Two plus four and that gives me a limit of six. Of six. I'm sorry. Um, perfect. So again, just a great situation where we use direct substitution, we get something that's indeterminate and then we go ahead and factor. That's usually the first method to try and we see that we actually do get a limit. So the limit does exist. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so I'm already seeing another quadratic. The bottom, you can already tell if I were to plug in four, I'm gonna get zero. But again, you don't wanna assume that that's what's gonna happen. There's a possibility the limit does not exist. There's a possibility we probably don't get an indeterminate form right away. So I would suggest that we continue to use direct substitution and plug in the four and see what we get. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I have two times four squared minus five times four minus 12 all over four minus four. Like we mentioned, the denominator is already zero, so that's fine. And so we have 
2 times 4 squared, it looks like it's 32 minus 20 minus 12. 32 minus 20 is 12 minus 12 is going to be 0. So 0 equals 0, another indeterminate form. And we kind of already knew that we were going to have to um, use a specific method, probably factor. But of course, it's always good to test it just to double check that, hey, we actually do get indeterminate form here. All right. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and see what we can factor out. I have X minus four here. OK, so X minus four is on the bottom. Um, the top, there's a couple ways that you can factor this. Some people kind of already do a guess and check method. But for now, I'm actually just going to show the work as to how we factor this out. So I'm going to take the two multiply it to the negative 12. And so now I have negative 24. And so I need to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative five. Looks like that's negative eight and positive three. So that top so far is going to be two X squared minus eight X plus three X minus 12. And if I group these, it becomes, I'm actually just going to write that on my numerator now. 2x plus 3 times x minus 4. Again, some people already do this in their head. At this point, you should be really proficient with factoring because you're in calculus. I mean, these methods should be second nature to you now. Okay, x minus 4 cancels out like we hoped it would. And then now we have the limit as x approaches 4 of 2x plus 3. Let's go ahead and plug in the 4 and see what we get. 2 times 4 plus 3. And that's eight plus three, which is gonna be 11, boom. So the limit does exist. And again, it looks like there was a hole at that particular function. All right, hopefully that's making sense to you all. And now let's go ahead and look at the next type of limit. Okay, looks eh, a little complicated. We have a cubic function on top, but again, the same thing, I'm not gonna avoid this for you guys i'm actually going to go ahead and plug in three again it looks like it gets zero on the bottom we already knew that and then on the top three q minus three times three squared minus four times three plus 12. okay so it looks like we have 27 minus 27 minus 12 plus 12 all over zero no surprise there we get zero over zero okay this is where I keep mentioning we'd get in determinate form. Now we have to be a little creative. It, you know, in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and factor stuff out. Nothing crazy. I mean, it's just a cubic function. Uh, because it has four terms, I'm just gonna go ahead and perhaps look at the numerator and then I can go ahead and use grouping. So if I rewrite that, I have uh, I can factor out an x squared from the first group there and get x minus 3 and then factor out a negative 4 from the second group and also get negative 4 times x minus 3. It's exactly what I want. Okay, just a little more rewriting here. Let's just make it clean. So x minus 4 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. Awesome. What do you know? Not surprised that x minus 3 cancels out. So I have my limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 4. And now I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution again. 3 squared minus 4. And that equals 9 minus 4, which is equal to 5. So the limit does exist. Again, we get indeterminate form and we have to be creative with our methods here. Awesome. Okay, I feel like we are doing great so far. So just think about this. So, you know, everything that we've been doing, we talked about using all these types of methods so far. We talked about direct substitution, then we started talking about factoring. So the next thing that we should probably do is not just know how to factor by, you know, quadratics, factor by grouping, but we should also know some difference of cubes. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and do the next problem, and you tell me if it was helpful or essential to know our difference of cubes. Yep, sure is. I can already see that we are gonna have to use difference of cubes here. All right, let's go ahead and plug in the two. And I get two cubed minus eight over two minus two. Of course, eight minus eight over zero, zero over zero indeterminate. Okay, 
course, I had to know that, or I already knew that that was going to happen. So let's go ahead and look at the numerator, x cubed minus 8. You probably already know that this is going to be a difference of cubes, even before I mentioned it. But I'm hoping that you remember this. If not, keep in mind that a cubed minus b cubed is going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. All right. So if I kind of apply this idea or this method to my limit, my numerator is going to become x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over 2 minus x. I like this problem a lot because, you know, we know the, the x minus 2 and this 2 minus x is going to cancel out, but they're not necessarily the same thing. So we really have to know this I like to call it a trick, but honestly, it's to some people, it's like pretty obvious that if we want to turn the denominator 2 minus x into x minus 2, I'm going to have to go ahead and factor out. Oops, let me go ahead and continue writing it in red. I'm going to have to factor out a negative 1 from the denominator. So that way it can switch around. Okay, so x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over, check this out, negative and then x minus 2. And if you don't trust me, go ahead and distribute that negative back into the parentheses and see for yourself that you do get the same thing, 2 minus x. All right. So look what cancels out, x minus 2. And now I have a nice limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2x plus 4 over negative 1. You cannot forget that negative that's outside of the parentheses in the denominator. All right. It's time for direct substitution. What do I get? 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4 all over negative 1. And that looks like it becomes 12 over negative 1 or negative 12. Okay. Now, as you can tell, I'm being, you know, very meticulous or I'm being very careful that I'm showing every single step. Obviously, you know, that negative 1 on the bottom, you can, you know, bring it to the top if you like. But I'm just trying to be as detailed as I can so that someone out there Hopefully, you know, if you're confused, you can understand why I have that negative on there. And if you don't really care for that negative on the bottom, you just want to move it to the top, do your own thing. Okay, do you. All right. So we've talked about all the factory methods. I think that covers them all. There's going to be a few things that you're going to need to know in terms of factoring. There is quadratics. There is cubics. There is a uh, difference of cubes, difference of... Um, some indifference of cubes got confused there uh, and then of course it's going to be grouping um, and it doesn't help to know like the rational root theorem I think those methods are always helpful so now let's talk about a different scenario I'm going to have a limit that I'm about to show on the screen and I want you to think about why this is so different now it's not a quadratic it's not a cubic function it's not a um, you know a difference of cubes so we have to do something else. The very first thing that I'm going to do, you can probably already solve and notice that this is going to be indeterminate. So I have root 9 minus 3 over 9 minus 9. Root 9 is 3, so 3 minus 3 over 9 minus 9. What do you know? 0 over 0. Okay? Indeterminate again. So now we have to try a different method. We can't factor. Um, that's not going to be allowed here. I mean, uh, Honestly, I don't know how to factor this out. Um, you can probably be creative. There's probably a genius out there watching this. So if you have a different method, feel free to comment in uh, this video. But I think the next thing that we should try to do, because we have a radical, and that's the biggest secret here, is that whenever you see this radical, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate. And that's going to be root x plus 3 and root x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. Okay, so let me just worry about the top so far because that's technically what I want to cancel out. I want to get rid of that uh, radical in some way. If I FOIL this, it's going to become x minus 9. Okay, if you want to see the steps for that, I'll write it here on the left or on the right-hand side in green. That becomes x plus 3 root x minus 3 root x minus 9. I use the FOIL method or distributive property as some people like to call it. The 3 root x's cancel out so you're left with x minus 9. So that's why we have that. 
Okay. Now on the bottom, a lot of us are always tempted to use foil distributive property, but because we're not trying to cancel out the uh, radical, that's technically what we're trying to do in this limit, leave it factored out. That's a method you'll learn right away. The reason being is because look at the top, boom, I could already cancel out the X minus nine. So had I foiled out the bottom, it would have made things a little more difficult for us to see and visualize what's going to cancel out. So I'll just tell you that again, if you're trying to cancel out the radical, foil the radical parts, and then the other values that didn't have radicals, so in this case, the denominator had the X minus nine and the root X plus three, just leave that um, factored out. Don't foil it. Okay. And so now I'm left with one over root X plus three, and I can go ahead and plug in the nine, one over root nine plus three. That nine looks a little terrible there. Okay. It's better. One over three plus three or one sixth. Oh yeah. Okay. Gonna go to the next one. If you have this in front of you already downloaded, you probably already saw it and you all kind of already have an idea of what to do. But once again, we cannot do ourselves a disservice and not use um, direct substitution. I would suggest we always use direct substitution. So let's go ahead and do that. I know it's a little time consuming and annoying because a lot of the times this is just going to become zero over zero. And that is true, but you should always check and it'll make your teacher very happy. And it's going to kind of, you know, have um, make you understand the process in your head. Okay, cool. Indeterminate. No surprise here. That's exactly what we want in this video. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to erase my work there because we already know this is going to be indeterminate. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate root X plus four plus two. Okay. So remember what I mentioned, the stuff you don't want to cancel out. The whole point of multiplying by the conjugate is because I want that root X plus four to go away. So on the numerator, I'm not going to even distribute that X. I'm going to leave that stuff just factored out. And then on the bottom, you can go ahead and do all the work. You can do the FOIL method, but I'm just going to go ahead and already rewrite this as X plus four minus four. Let's simplify this a little bit more. Hopefully you can see what happens on the bottom. I'm just rewriting all my work here. X plus four minus four is just X. And the X is on the top and the bottom cancel out. You see what I mean about leaving the top factored out because that X I mean, it's very noticeable what's going to cancel out. And had we distributed the X, it could have made it, you know, a little more confusing. All right. So now that we cancel that out, we can go ahead and use direct substitution again. And we get that the limit is root four plus two or two plus two, which is equal to four. Nice. Okay, cool. Now be ready for this next problem. I like this one a lot. Um, I think it's a fun problem. And you're going to see why. Okay, this is for all those people that are watching this video and thinking, okay, I need some sort of a challenge. And I think, in my opinion, this is it. Okay, so same thing. Um, I kind of already know the methods that I'm going to use here, but I should always use direct substitution. And that's going to give me root 9 plus 7 minus 3 over 3 plus 3. Let's check this out. Okay, this is root 16 minus 3 over 3 plus 3. Oh, wow. Look at this. 4 minus 3 over 6. I know I mentioned that this was going to be the hardest one, but uh, something tells me, again, seeing the radical, I thought I was going to have to use or multiply by the conjugate, but I didn't have to. Why? Because I should always use direct substitution. Some people would jump the gun and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate already. And eventually, after all this work, you were going to get a uh, one sixth. All right, so let's look back at what we've done so far. We did factoring, we did quadratics, we did some uh, grouping, we did some sum and difference of squares. Um, sometimes, if possible, I didn't do it in this video, but you can do like the rational root theorem to factor out. Then we did the conjugate. And now let's talk about a different scenario where you're going to have a fraction within a fraction. So I'm going to go back to this document. And let's look at what we have here. You see that we have a fraction within a fraction. 
Once again, I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution. And that's going to give me 1 over 0 plus 4 minus 1 over 4 over x. And this is going to become 1 fourth minus 1 fourth over. I realize that I have x in the bottom, but really I should have 0. So 0 in the denominator and 0 over 0. Once again, we get indeterminate form. This is why I keep saying as you, I mentioned in the previous problem, use direct substitution first because there is a possibility that you can actually just find your limit right away. But in this case, we're obviously going to have to do something else. We're going to have to be creative with our limit so that we can actually find what this limit is going to be. Okay. Can't do the conjugate. We can factor out. At this point, we want to get rid of these denominators because we have the x plus 4 on the first term in the numerator and then the 4 in the second term in the numerator. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by what we call the GCF. So it's like I'm trying to get common denominators. And I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the 4 times x plus 4. Okay, this is where things get a little tricky. Don't forget, you have to multiply on the numerator the 4x plus 4 to both terms. And I'm just going to show you what's going to happen. I'm actually going to show all the work here. So I have 4x plus 4 over x plus 4 minus 4x plus 4 over 4. And in the bottom, I have x times 4 times x plus 4. Okay. I showed all that work so that we can see what happens. Let's talk about that first fraction. Kind of like circled it there with some green. The x plus 4s cancel out. So what does that mean? That first term becomes just a 4. Minus, let's go to that second term. I circled that again in green. What cancels out? The 4s. So then I'm left with 4 minus parentheses x plus 4. I got to be very, very mindful of those parentheses. Because these fractions are being subtracted, I'm going to have to make sure I distribute the negative sign into the x and the 4. So just be mindful of that. Okay, I have over x times 4 times x plus 4. Let's go ahead and simplify some stuff. Uh, it looks like the numerator becomes 4. And if I distribute that negative sign, it's minus x minus 4 all over x times 4 times x plus 4. Okay, if I continue, the 4s cancel out, which is really nice. So now I'm left with just negative x over x times 4 times x plus 4. Okay. You notice that the x's cancel out there? Yes, they do. The top and the bottom x's cancel out, leaving me with negative 1 over 4 times x plus 4. Now let's go ahead and plug in the 0, and I get negative 1 over 4 times 0 plus 4, and this just becomes negative 1 over 16. Okay. A little more complicated with these types of problems, but not that difficult if you kind of follow the process of every single limit here. Okay, so whenever you have a fraction within a fraction, you have to make sure that you multiply both the top and the bottom by the GCF and then start canceling out. Show as much work as you like. Show as much work as you can. I encourage you to show your work because if you try to do a lot of these problems in your head, you are going to be in trouble. All right, so I highly, highly, highly encourage you that if you're doing these problems, show all the work. Like what I'm doing here, I mean, it doesn't take me that long to show every single step to cancel stuff out. Okay, let's go to the next problem. Oop, another one, a fraction within a fraction. Just to, you know, show all the work, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 0. Use direct substitution, 1 over 3 plus 0 minus 1 over 3 minus 0 over uh, 0. 1 third minus 1 third over zero so zero over zero indeterminate not a big surprise there okay cool so let's go ahead and think about our strategy here we can use factoring we shouldn't use conjugates i mean i i don't know how we can do that uh, or why we would do that nonetheless uh we should probably try to use some sort of um GCF. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply both the top and the bottom by 3 plus x times 3 minus x over 3 plus x times 3 minus x. Okay, just to show all the work here, this becomes 
3 plus x, 3 minus x all over 3 plus x. You can already tell what's going to cancel out there. 3 plus x, 3 minus x all over 3 minus x over x times 3 plus x, 3 minus x. All right. So let's talk about that first fraction. Circle that in green there, 3 plus x canceled out. Let's talk about that second fraction. Maybe I can circle it in black here. The 3 minus x canceled out. All right, cool. That leaves me with a limit as x approaches 0 of 3 minus x minus parentheses 3 plus x all over x times 3 plus x times 3 minus x. Okay, I'm going to move my limit up here. On the right, I have the limit as x approaches 0. And again, I'm going to have 3 minus x. And this is what it keeps saying. You know, you got to make sure, be mindful of your negatives and your parentheses because that negative uh, sign needs to distribute to the 3 and the x that I have there. And that leaves me with minus 3 minus x all over x times 3 plus x over 3 minus x. Okay, it looks like the 3s cancel out on the numerator, but then the x's combine. Not too bad. And then now we're left with the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 2x over x times 3 plus x, 3 minus x. You notice anything that cancels out on the top and the bottom? Hoping that you said the x on the top and the bottom. Yes, they do. You are correct. Okay, the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 2 over 3 plus x, 3 minus x, and now I can go ahead and use direct substitution. Negative 2 over 3 plus 0 times 3 minus 0, and that gives me negative 2 over 9, I believe. If I'm wrong or if you see a mistake, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I am known, you know, I'm not that, not that smart. I just know the process, I just know the methods here, and I just happen to love math and be a huge, huge advocate of learning math and um, students being in STEM. So if you catch a mistake, let me know. That's okay, you won't hurt my feelings. Awesome. Okay, so we have the this fraction type limit. I'm hoping that the next one is very similar. Ooh, looks like it is. And I almost wanna say there's a lot of things that we can do here, but I'm not so sure. Okay, the very first thing that we should always try, like we mentioned, is to go ahead and use direct substitution because there is a possibility the limit exists. It's zero or it's just undefined. I don't know. Let's figure it out. So let's see. On the bottom, I get negative six plus six. We already know it's going to be zero. But on the top, I have two times negative six plus eight over negative six squared minus 12 minus one over negative six. Ooh, we. Okay. My denominator, I already know, is going to be 0, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But then I have negative 12 plus 8 over 36 minus 12. And then this second fraction that had a minus 1 over negative 6, that's a minus negative 1, 6. So that becomes a plus 1, 6 because we have a negative negative. Okay. Perhaps this is the same uh, the same value. Let's check. So negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4 over 36 minus 12. I'm hoping I get this right. It's 24 plus 1 sixth over 0. Yes. Negative 4 over 4 is the same thing as negative 1 sixth plus 1 sixth over 0. 0 over 0. Indeterminate form. I know. I know. This is probably a waste of time for a lot of you. You can already tell or you already are jumping the gun and... Um, using some sort of other method to find the limit. Maybe you're using Lopatol's row. I don't know. However, make sure you always use direct substitution. I think it's a good habit to have because some teachers are going to want you to do it. Some teachers are not. So, you know, just be prepared for, our, for doing it, I would say. I think that is your best bet. Okay, cool. Since we know that this is going to be indeterminate, now we have to try a different method. So, we have fractions within a fraction. So, I, I think... I'm just going to go ahead and multiply both the top and the bottom by the GCF. X times X squared minus 12. X times X squared minus 12. Okay. And I know I promised you I was going to show all the work and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do X times X squared minus 12 all over X squared minus 12 minus X times X squared minus 12 all over X all over X plus 6 
times x times x squared minus 12. Okay, cool. All right, so let's look at that first fraction on the top. The x squared minus 12 is going to cancel out. That's great. And then on the second fraction, the x's cancel out. So what am I left with? I'm left with the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x plus 8 times x minus x squared minus 12 all over x plus 6 times x times x squared minus 12. Okay, this one's probably going to require a little bit more work. All right, let's go ahead and try that out. On the numerator, I think I should probably factor or distribute this x to both values. So that's going to give me 2x squared plus 8x. And then in the second frat or the second value is distribute that negative uh, term or that negative sign into both values in the parentheses, giving me x squared plus 12 all over x plus 6 times x times x squared minus 12. All right. And again, you're probably moving way faster than I am, but don't forget that there's probably other people watching the video that want me to show every single step. So I'm here for all of y'all. Okay. On the numerator, x squared and the x squared can simplify or combine. So that gives me x squared plus 8x plus 12 all over x plus 6 times x times x squared minus 12. And you're probably thinking, uh, yeah, um, don't know what to do next. And you're right. It's kind of difficult. If you were to plug in zero again, I guarantee, I promise you, you will get, um, something that's indeterminate or will you? Yeah, you're going to get 12. It looks like, uh, 12 over zero. So that's, that's not good. And that's probably going to tell us that it's undefined. But the one thing that I will suggest we do is just to be safe is factor out the top. That gives me x plus 6 times x plus 2 over x plus 6 times x times x squared minus 12. Wow. The x plus 6 cancel out. No surprise there. But now, just give me one second. I'm actually going to try to move my work here. I don't want to leave y'all behind. So let's just kind of like put it right there, perhaps, if you're, if you're okay with that. Okay. So then that leaves me with the limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 2 times x times x squared minus 12. And let's see, it looks like nothing can actually cancel out. So if I use direct substitution, I get 2 over 0 times 0 minus 12. So 2 over 0. This is actually a good thing. I think I had mentioned this right before we even talked about factoring. I said if you were to plug in 0, you would get an indeterminate form. And that is the case. But check this out. We get 2 over 0. That's okay. Okay? It is not indeterminate because it's not 0 over 0. 2 over 0 is just undefined. 2 divided by 0. Anything divided by 0 just does not exist. So that tells you that my limit is just undefined. Um, it can either go to infinity, negative infinity. Something is going on there that we can examine if we wanted to. But because we get 2 over 0, the limit is undefined. Okay. Nice. These were all the methods that I wanted to cover with you guys. I hope that you found it helpful. And of course, if there is anything that you guys want to cover, if there is a specific concept or a specific limit that you want to review, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I try to read them as much as possible. And of course, you can always follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Subscribe to this channel, like this video so I can continue making more math content for you guys. All right. Cool. I will see you soon. And until then, happy trails.